you for joining me in part three. In part one, we mixed the ingredients. In part two, we kneaded the dough. Uh, and now part three, I'm going to show you the window pane test. Now this is an optional step, you don't need to do it, but it's useful just for checking if you've done a good job of kneading your dough, if you've built up enough strength um, in your dough. And I heard about the window pane test when I was learning to make pizza first. And basically all it is, you take off a piece of dough and then you stretch it out and you, can, you see if you can stretch it out thin enough that you can see through it like a window, hence the window pane test. Um, but what wasn't mentioned really when I tried it first is that you should, should let your dough rest after kneading um, because straight after kneading the dough is still kind of a bit tense, you know, we've, we've worked it really hard and so just like we let it rest before kneading, we need to let it rest again before giving it the window pane test and then now we can take it out and again you'll see, just like we did like, um, after kneading, we, we let it rest, sorry after mixing first we let it rest 30 minutes. Now we've let it rest again after kneading. Look how smooth it is again. Even smoother than it was when we were kneading it. So now's a great time to try this window pane test. Again, this is an optional step. You'll get to the point where you won't need to do it because you'll know when your, your dough is at the right stage when you're kneading. But it's a good one to try and all we have to do is basically break off a piece of dough. See how lo lovely and stretchy this is already. But we'll just break off. Doesn't really matter how big it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly start pulling it, pulling it apart. We're not trying to rip the dough here, we're just trying to gently go around and see, see how much we can stretch it out. I'll just hold it up to the light and then you should be able to see that you can actually see through the dough. You can actually see the light coming through it. And that's when we know we've got a really nice dough. So this one, we can see how stretchy this is now thin, we've managed to just stretch that. And that's sort of how thin we're going to want to be able to um, stretch our pizza in the end. So this is a really nice dough now. So we're going to leave this to prove now. I'm going to move it into a bigger bowl, so we don't want to use this small one because as it proves it's going to rise about double in size. So I've gone back to the original bowl we used for mixing. I'm going to leave it to prove in here. And we're not going to boil it into um, dough balls, into pizza balls right away. Because uh, if we do that, because we're leaving it so long to prove, it'll gradually lose its strength over time. And so if we boil it now and leave it for 20 hours, 24 hours, when we come to actually shape the pizza, we're going to find it's lost all its strength and it's just, you know, a big, uh, big mess. And we're not going to be able to, it's not going to have enough strength for us to stretch it out uh, to make a nice pizza. So for that reason, we do what's called a bulk ferment or a bulk prove. And you don't really need to worry too much about shaping it at this stage because like I say, we are shaping it again. But you, you can make it into a dough ball which builds a little bit extra strength for the proving by taking your hands at the front here and then pulling in. And then you can see how this, kind of the tension that you create at the front here creates this, this dough ball. And then that's a nice you can shape it off, round it off like this with your hands. As I say, don't worry too much about it. And then we can pop that in here. And then we're going to cover that up and leave that to prove for about 20, 18 to 20 hours. And then four to six hours before we want to make the pizza, that's when we're going to come back to it in the next step. And we're going to shape it into our dough balls. And then we're going to give it a final four to six hour prove. And then it'll be ready to cook with. I'm just going to pop it back in the bag and make sure it's covered up well because otherwise this dough can dry out if it's at all exposed to air, if you haven't got a tight seal. A carrier bag I found does the job perfectly fine. You can use cling film um, if you want to get a really nice tight seal, but I find this works fine. Uh, and as I say, I wouldn't recommend using a damp towel, especially at this stage, because it will dry out over time, the towel, and then you'll find that your dough starts drying out, and we definitely don't want that, otherwise we'll get a skin on our dough. So that's it for part three. Thanks for checking that one out. Join us for part four where I'll be uh, shaping up these dough balls in about 18 hours, 20 hours time. And we'll be shaping up into dough balls ready to make pizza. Mm.